going live. <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. All right, everybody. Okay, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Jansen. Hope you're all having a great day today. Okay. So what is it that we're doing today? This is live motivation, daily reflections. Um, first off, I want to apologize. We were supposed to go live with uh, Vern Davis, uh, Longhorn the Comedian. Um, however, due to um, technical issues... Um, I'll have to try that another time. Um, it goes up there with why I'm going to be interviewing the kids from home about the Soapbox Derby, stuff like that. So I apologize, but um, this will be a lot better. Um, Vern is a great guy. I can't, uh, make sure to go try, uh, check out his site, Longhorn the Comedian. Uh, look up Longhorn on uh, Facebook and on YouTube and stuff. I promise you, you can't go wrong with the guy. He's a Army vet. He does a thing called Thank You for Your Service. And he does a lot of like I do. When you get a little bit of downtime, you know, um, a little bit goes a long way. So we always try to help people out. We always try to um, help each other. Uh, there's a lot of military in the world. Now, what our topic today was going to be about was um, with everything going on, people are going to start going stir crazy. And everybody doesn't always understand that. So what we want to do is kind of give, you know, different viewpoints of what you can do and things to expect, Okay. Because as people are inside together, and I know that Hannibal, Missouri, I'm from Quincy, Illinois, but Hannibal, Missouri just did a uh, shelter order. So, and then I did, somebody told me that in St. Louis, Missouri, that they're starting to give out tickets and stuff for PM people being outside their houses uh, that are not supposed to be. Um, you think about it is you've got to kind of have self-discipline when this is all going on, because if you don't, you're going to get in trouble. And it's, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go with politics with it, whether it's right or wrong or any of the other stuff. But I'm going to tell you this, you know, use a little humor, you know, try to go onto YouTube and stuff like that and find some comedy that you like. You got to learn to laugh a little bit because what's going to happen is in people's minds and what for years we've been trying to talk about PTSD to people and we use some humor and some, you know, clever uh, um, different things that we do in order to let people understand what PTSD is, especially for military. Well, now a lot of people don't know they're going to be getting a lot of the PTSD because of you know this virus it's all over the world it's not a it's not something that's right here in the united states it is all over the world and there's going to be a lot of people looking out so a couple of the things you got to start looking out for is people that before never knew they had ptsd are going to find out very quickly that they've had it for a very long time it's just they were able to do things over and over in order to never let a you know affect them the only difference is when you start getting trapped inside when you start becoming imprisoned within your surroundings there are things you need to know. It's it's like getting claustrophobia and start freaking out, but there's nothing you can do about it. Now, what a lot of people don't know about me is I can I've been in tanks and tracks and AAVs and you know I've been under mountains and you know I've done rock climbing, but I actually have a fear of claustrophobia. And I think the thing that really got my fear was is when over in Chile. Do you remember when they had the uh, the miners that were in? Okay, they got trapped, and they finally were able to dig a small borehole big enough for one person to fit inside, and it took them about 20 minutes to get to the top, one person at a time, but they were trapped underground. That was the first time that when I watched stuff like that, that my uh, claustrophobia really got excited. It really kind of bothered me a little bit, because just thinking about mm -hmm. not being able to move for 20 minutes and have to be taken directly up, and there's nothing you can do about it. It, because it traps you in your mind. Remember this, whenever you're trapped, you're actually trapped in your mind. You're not trapped in your body, you're trapped in your mind. So what I'm trying to tell everybody is, you know, the more kindness that we put out there in the world, the more it's going to be a lot easier. You know, if we go around and start snapping at everybody, yelling at everybody, trying to turn each other's kids against them and everything else, you know, we're never going to get through this. Or we are, but it, it's going to be really bad when we do. And we can do more damage than good. Or we can choose to do more good than damage. Um, because no matter how anybody looks at this, no matter what we do, the coronavirus and just like having the flu or anything else, stay inside until, you know, the symptoms go away. You don't want to go to somebody that has it because you don't want to catch it yourself. Okay. So, you know, just use good habits. Start getting in the muscle memory of washing hands and stuff. Now, that being said, let's get into a little bit of some other things that people can do while they're doing this. One of the things that you can start doing is forgiving each other for every bad thing that goes on in life. There's not a person alive today that I cannot forgive for something they've done or I've done to them. But just because we forgive them, 
it still doesn't mean the weight's lifted off your chest. Remember, you also have to forgive yourself. Now, I don't care if you're religious or not. Somebody asked me today, and I told them that I'm going to make a lot of people mad because, you know, if, you know, what, what would cause, how can we have peace today across the world? What would, what would mean me peace? You know what, to me, you know what peace means? All religions have to go, go bye-bye. All people have to get rid of this dominant, controlling attitude. Jealousy has to go bye-bye, you know, power and control. Because what I've learned through organized religion, even though I am Catholic, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I, I love God and Jesus. Don't get me wrong. But I've learned that people sometimes use their position of authority for power. So what we got to start doing is forgiving people for that. This is going along with what I'm trying to say. You know, we weren't able to get into the churches, you know, Jews, Gentiles, uh, Muslim, Christians, Catholics, uh, Methodists, Lutheran. Mormon, atheist, whatever. they can't, We can't get around anybody right now. But you know what we can do? We can pray for people. We can call people. We can text them. We can write letters to them. And we can do things that are going to make a difference in that person's life. You know, sometimes it doesn't take too much to have your kids sit down and write a handwritten letter. Okay? I know that's not saying too much. But, you know, while I've been down, but I, but even when I was in the Marine Corps, we had a lot of downtime being on board ship where we lived on coffin racks. Okay? And I remember that every time I'd think of somebody in my hometown or think of somebody in my past, I would actually do my best to get their address and I'd write them a handwritten letter. And eventually I started writing letters back and forth to my friends as many as I could. The ones I didn't write a letter to, I wish I would have, uh, but I didn't want to get in trouble with or anything like that. So I thought if I sent a letter, they may end up getting in trouble because sometimes people get in controlling relationships and stuff and we just kind of want to stay away from it because there's nothing we can do, or at least that's what it seems like. You know... The whole idea is, you know, I've never treated my friends. I, I, I always respected my friends, and I still respect my friends to this day. And, yes, I've had falling out with friends over the years, and, yes, sometimes my personality can be a little overwhelming for people because they don't always understand where I'm coming from. But as I have achieved different things in my life, I've also learned that sometimes I have to go back and apologize for things that I've done because sometimes we don't always see what we're doing or actions that we're causing. And right now with the coronavirus and everything going on right now, we're not seeing that maybe we're getting a little more agitated. Maybe we're getting a little more, you know, we're working from home, but we're locking the doors. Or maybe we're trying to shut ourselves off from the people that love us because we don't know what else to do. Because we don't have an answer for them. So many people, they live off of having an answer for people. And when they don't have an answer for people, what do they do? They shut down everybody. They just decide, well, if I can't do it for them, I can't do it for nobody. That's wrong. You need to let other people come in because, you know what, eventually they're going to say something that's going to remind you of something that you have to do. Or maybe that's something that can get you up and going. A lot of us that have been in leadership positions for so long, we find ourselves at a loss. We find ourselves because, you know, when you lead, what do you do? you got to go in first. got to do what's right, you know. And basically, here we are washing our hands. How many times can you tell somebody to wash their hands? You know, but as a leader, we can also tell them, look, stay patient. People are looking at you right now. They're looking at all the people out there. They're looking at how nervous you are. They're looking at how fearful you're being. This is a very bad disease. I get that. This is a very bad virus. Sorry, very bad virus. But it's nothing that no one cannot get through without patience. And that's the one thing. Maybe this is a great experiment in exercising patience right now. Patience, you know, sitting down, drawing with your kids, you know, coloring, putting a puzzle together, doing a board game. Okay, with me, with my business stuff, I, I know for all my team and everything else, I kind of backed off a little bit, but I got back out my whiteboards and I'm going over different techniques and strategies and stuff so people can, you know, be able to work from home and be able to do a lot more. But everybody's different. Okay, I mean, look at what's going on with the Olympics right now. You know, these athletes still have to train. They just have to train on their own now. They have to train by themselves. That doesn't make them any better or any worse. It just means they have to try something different. And that leads me in, this, that, that's a segue into my next thing. Living outside your box, living outside your comfort zone. I've been saying this for many, many years. You have to live outside your comfort zone. Okay, the very first time I lived outside my comfort zone was when I basically became a lifeguard. After that, it was like, okay, I can try this. I was doing things that people told me I couldn't do, shouldn't do, or wouldn't do. And believe it or not, I joined the Army. The very first thing I did between my junior and senior year of high school, I joined the Army. And because people are like, oh, you know, you can't get in at 17 years old. Yes, I can. I got in at 17. The thing about it is when I graduated, I went active duty with the Marine Corps. 
So right back to boot camp I went. So I had to do two different boot camps all within, you know, 365 days of each other. That kind of sucked, let me tell you that right now. <laughs> but I made it to the Marine Corps, then I stayed in the Marine Corps for a very long period of time. Now in the Marine Corps, when you start getting placed at home and you're doing a lot of different things, we were moving so fast, but because we were around each other, you know, it's kind of like why I tell everybody, keep doing puzzles, keep, you know, writing letters, uh, keep working out in your ho houses. Because what happened with the Marine Corps is I thought everybody in back home was passing me by. Okay, now I don't know if this is going to help anybody, but it makes a lot of sense, you know. We have Quincy, Pace, and Liberty, Menden, Ursa, Palmyra, um, Mount Sterling, Macomb, all these different towns around us and everything else. Everybody knows each other. But when I was in the Marine Corps, I thought my world was passing me by because that's where I grew up with. That's what I got used to. Okay, but the fact is I came back home, the same people were doing the same thing, the same buildings were still being occupied, you know, and nothing changed. It turned out I changed. And while I was in, you know, it's like, okay, here we're, we're in Italy, Spain, Greece, Rome, you know, all these different countries, Kosovo, former Yugoslavia, uh, Panama, you know, all these different countries we went to. And I come back home thinking the world's passing me by when it turns out I was passing it by. Now, when everybody's at home, they don't understand that you can be doing so much more. By the time you're done with it, you're going to look up and say, wow, coronavirus is over and you're going to have so much done. Others are going to turn around and they're going to be miserable and they're going to be like, well, I did the same thing I do every day. I just didn't go outside. How'd that help? How did that help anybody? How did that help yourself? So make sure you get up, get out, get moving, you know, doing nice things, okay? Yes, I'm still making the bread for all you guys asking. I have not gotten to it yet. I still got the strawberries in the fridge. I'm supposed to do that today. My daughter didn't want to help me, though. It's all right. I cried. I cried into my pillow. <laughs> anyway, the whole idea is this. We all come from different personalities. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different things, the reason why we may be mad at somebody or hate somebody. But here's just it. You're alive today, right? You're healthy I think the best thing you can do is really think about it. I, I've literally learned to forgive every single person that upset me. In fact, somebody upset me the other day by downing on what I do and took advantage. And, and they thought the first thing I was going to do, I'm like, no, I just forgave them and moved on. It's not worth it. I can't get back my time. That's the reason why I usually just like, okay, and I move on. I can get back money. I can get back possessions. I just can't get back time. And I'm not going to waste my time with people that purposely take advantage of people. And so, like I said, if that's the one thing you got to worry about, then worry about it. And last, I want to say this. If you're going to do something in life, and I'll leave it here, and, and just give me a few minutes on this one. One of the best, best things about life is this. You know, if you're going to be a doctor, it's going to take, you know, years to become that best doctor. You're not going to start making money. You know, doctors that get hired on at a hospital or whatnot, you know, guess what? They don't start making money for several years. You know, if you're going to become a lawyer, okay, so a lawyer gets on, they get on with a good firm, but they don't, they have to pay back all their bills. It takes them three, four, five, even sometimes even 10 years in order to become an experienced lawyer. All right, truck drivers, they get in there and now they're making small pay. They may be making, I don't know, uh, 30 cents per mile or something like that. And they're trying to get up to 65 cents per mile. Okay, so within the first couple years, you know, first you've got to make sure that they get the job. So they got two years experience. So what, what I'm trying to say is this. If you go into a business and the first thing you do right away is like, I didn't make any money after the first week or even after the first year, you can't blame the business for that. You can only blame yourself. And the reason why I say that is there's over 2,600 network marketing businesses out there that work, okay? But what makes them work is that you have to get behind them. You think Sam Walton, when he created Walmart, okay, did it overnight? No, he worked at Ben Franklin delivering stuff. I don't know if you knew this or not, but Sam Walton, the person that created Walmart, his job was working at Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin Crafts. He went up to Ben Franklin and said, hey, I got this idea for a better thing. You know what, you know what the owners of Ben Franklin? Ah, we're not interested. Great. Ben Franklin today is bankrupt. Sam Walton's family are some of the richest people in the world. Why? Because he had a dream. He de But it took him years to build that. And he created it through distribution. A distribution center, okay? Now, why is this important? 
Because if you're over there, you're thinking, man, I'm never going to make any money. Man, I'm, j I'm just done. I just quit. Great. And when you did that in high school you, and you didn't get your GED or your diploma, no one gave it to you. Now, why do I say it like that? Because it takes time. It takes knowledge. It takes experience. I've been told so many times. I've gotten told so many times. I walk in. I get nervous. I used to get nervous, okay, at what I do. Why? Because I didn't want to be told no more. But then there was a little nagging thing in the back of me that says, nope, got to keep pushing forward. I got told by hundreds of people I'd never be a Marine. I got told the Marines suck. Oh, you'll never do that. Oh, my God, you're just going to be... You know, I had an aunt tell me I was nothing but a bullet sponge. I, 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 had, I, I had no use in life whatsoever. You know, that's a story for another day. But I got told no. I got told I can't. I got told over and over again that I would never do it. You want to know something? I'm a proud Marine veteran to this day. I'm a proud college graduate this day. I graduated from high school to this day. I can't tell you how many classes and courses I've taken that I've graduated from and I've used and I've worked on. You know, I'm proud of the stuff I've done, but it took time, okay? So if you come into a business and you don't reach out for help, that's on you. And I don't want you to sit there and go back and say, everybody, oh, it's a pyramid or, oh my God, it costs... Yeah, but you knew that going into it. You know, just because it didn't make you wealthy overnight, nothing will. There is no such thing. You know, you can play the lottery. My grandma and grandpa played the lottery their entire lives. My grandma died at 98 years old. So for about, what, 90, 70 years? I don't know what you'd say. Do you realize they never won the lottery? Now, how much money would they have saved if they just kept their money and not played the lottery? But oh my gosh, we can get rich quick. That's the reason why Las Vegas, and don't get me wrong, I love Las Vegas. Great place. But when you go into Las Vegas, what's the first thing that you do? Oh, I'm going to go hit it rich on the nickel machines. <laughs> no one hits it rich on the nickel machines. The house always wins. But it's a nice, you know, release of energy. It's a nice release when you're doing it. But you can't go to Las Vegas and get wealthy. I'm sorry. You know how many people try to go over to the gambling boats, the river boats, and they win $100? But how many times they put a thousand dollars in, never won, yet they went a hundred, two hundred, three hundred bucks. But how long did it take them to get that? They don't even break even, and so they're all happy because they won something. So we'll take a thousand. By the way, you'll win a hundred. We'll take another thousand. Ah, uh, you might win fifty. And you're looking at that hundred and fifty bucks, like, yay! Look what I got. And then you realize that you just went through three thousand bucks to get a hundred and fifty. How is that reasonable or responsible? Like I said, people have addictions. People, they, they get this mindset that they're going to win the lottery. That's what business is. If you go into a business, no matter what it is, you have to work on it. You have to start from the ground up. You have to start in the mailroom. Uh, there was a movie with Michael J. Fox. He started in the mailroom of his uncle's business, right? Risky business, I think it was. Anyway, needless to say, he started at the bottom. You work your way to the top. You don't pass go. You don't pass, you know, you, you, you can't skip ahead. Okay, and the military they start you down at private unless you're bringing in a buddy, which means you're already doing it. Now you you can come out as a PFC. You know, even with being in the army, I started out as a private in the Marine Corps, and then I got private, then I got PFC, then I got Lance Corporal, then I got Corporal, then I got Sergeant. But you want to know something? I got the Sergeant as I was getting out. Didn't really mean too much, but it meant a lot to me because I knew I worked for it. Now, if I wanted to get my staff NCO, if I wanted to, I had to get a B billet. But here's what I'm trying to tell you is when you get into any business in life whatsoever, you have to understand that it takes time. You have to earn it. You have to work for it. You have to discover what it is. If you just go right there and then somebody comes in and asks you questions, you can make a big company go uh, flop right away. It doesn't matter where you're at in the world. Everybody will tell you you've got to learn from the bottom. And you've got to slowly build yourself up and keep working yourself up. Me, I happen to work with marketing a lot. So I do a lot with marketing. And me, I love people, so I love working with people a lot and seeing what their ideas and stuff are, you know, and I always give credit where credit is due. But the thing about it is you must make sure that when you're doing something, instead of downing on the people that brought you in or, man, it's, why don't you work it a little bit? Why don't you discover that, you know, okay, so it's sales. So you have to sell. No one's going to do it for you, okay? You have, no one's going to give you money. Why? Because if they did... It goes back to my old analogy. Grandma gives you 20 bucks for your birthday. 
where you get 20 bucks for going outside cutting the grass. Which 20 are you going to spend faster? The 20 you worked for or the 20 that was given? Problem is, the 20 your grandma gave you, you're going to go out and spend it. The 20 that you, you when you cut grass and everything else, you know what you're going to do with that? You're going to save it. You're going to like, oh, no one can touch that. I will earn that one. But the 20 that was given to you, oh, no, no, it's mine. And then you're going to go spend it. But the money that was earned, you're going to put it away. Why? Because it's how our mindset is. It's how we think of things. Okay? Now, in closing this, each and every one of you matter. Each and every one of you are important. Go and find some comedy. Go and loosen up. Do something different, you know? Um, I'm going to, when I get off here, I'm going to write Sister Florence Kuhn, my aunt who's at the mother house over in Indiana. She's a nun. I'm going to write her another letter and put it in the mail and drop a picture in the mail, okay? You know, my daughter doesn't even know it, but I've written her letters too, and I've written her sister, Gabby, who's not my daughter, but I wrote her letters also. I just put them away so if anything ever happens to me one day, they will find them. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> uh, I'm going to sneeze again. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> First video I ever taken was a sneeze, remember? Um, and it was no sound. You get to learn a little bit when you're a history person. So I just want everybody to know this. You guys can do whatever you want in life as long as you put forth the effort to go after it and work for it hard. Now, you may not get it because you may not, you may be missing a piece of the puzzle that you can't get there because you're missing something. You got to figure out what that is. Set your goals just right out of reach. Put things right out of your reach that you can know you get to them, but you have to try a little bit harder. Don't put them so high up there that, nah, it's too far away. I'm just not going to worry about it. It's like me telling everybody, I'm going to walk to Alaska. You know what's going to happen? I'm not going to walk to Alaska. I'm not going to run to Alaska. I may fly to Alaska, but I'm not going to walk to Alaska. It may be a goal, maybe a dream. Oh, I'm going to put that on my bucket list. I'm going to walk. No, I'm not going to walk to Alaska. Just because I said it doesn't mean that's going to happen. Now, if I want to go to Alaska and I find out and I get a flight, okay, go through Canada, whatever you got to do to get up there, then I'll go. But if you set dreams like that, I'm going to be the first person to go to the bottom of the sea. Yeah, I don't know how to swim. Well, how are you going to get to the bottom of the sea? Oh, no. Are you going to learn to swim? No. Okay. Are you going to go on a boat? No. Okay. So you just said it to say it. And that's what people do sometimes with their dreams. They just say it to say it. You've got to find responsibility. You've got to find criticism. You've got to find the best way of doing it. Okay? Anyway, that being said, keep this in mind. No matter who you are, you matter. You're important. You are key to your own future. You're key to the futures around everybody around you. You can make a difference in everybody's life. I think the world of you. I think you matter. I think you're important. You just have to utilize the skills that you learn and then learn new skills. If you want to move up, only you have that option. Only you can make those choices. You can say one thing or you can do one thing. Be a doer, not a sayer. Don't, I don't care who you're friends with. I don't care who you know. I don't care if you know Bill Gates or anybody else. You want to know something? Go, go cure malaria. What I do care about is what you actually bring to the table. What you are going to do for yourself. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Now execute it. Go do it. And let me see you do it. So, as you all know, we've been reading uh, The Dream Giver for Parents. It came after... Uh, the people were asking me about this, so I'll explain this. The Dream Giver, we read this one the other day, okay? And if you notice, now we're talking about the parents, how the parents felt, okay? Um, I'm giving away a few books such as Untrapped and The Four Disciplines, so I am giving these away. Uh, make sure if you want them to inbox me. Um, sometimes if you do it, I may just send them out to you. Um, I'm also buying a few more of these. It's the Go Giver Collection, which I am... I'm sending out if people like to read. Um, the other one that I've been liking to read lately um, is Treasure of Coast by Jim Rohn. It's really good, okay? Um, my suggestion would go find, um, there's, there's a person named Art. Go find something that says Just Do It, okay, by Art. Uh, anyway, Discipline. Discipline has within it the potential for creating future miracles. So in other words, discipline yourself right now. It's a great one to turn to right now. Discipline for what we're going through right now, okay? Discipline. The last lack, uh, the least lack of discipline starts to erode our self-esteem. So if you don't have a little bit of discipline right now, you're going to start going crazy. All right. I'm not going to read those, but this one I will. I'm not going to I'm just going to read these. are another quote book. Now, this one was given to me when I was in the Marine Corps, okay? 
and it was given to me by our good friend Jesse, and I was given it, and like I said, I read stuff out of this to my daughter, stuff like that, is because when we were overseas, when, our, when we were on our deployment and everything else, you know, people were worried about us, and I get that. So I will read someone by Wendell Berry. To go into the dark with a light is to know the light. To know the dark, go dark. Go without sight and find that the dark, too, blooms and sings and is traveled by dark feet in dark ways. I didn't say I understood them all. And I'll read one more and then we'll finish up. Uh, let's read one by Frederick Nietzsche. A few hours of mountain climbing turns a rascal and a saint into two pretty similar creatures. Creatures. Fatigue is the shortest way to equality and fraternity. And in the end, liberty will surrender to sleep. It means be a good person. That's the best thing I can say. It means be a good person. So, all right, everybody. That being said, remember, you can go to jeffjansen.org or you can look at me, for me on my YouTube page at jeffjansen.info, J-E-F-F-J-A-N-S-E-N dot I-N-F-O. Uh, we will be doing the pies and the cakes. I will get those out. Don't worry, Michelle. I've got yours coming. Um, and I'm making them for a lot of different people now. I just have not got to it. I got a little bit busy, and the sun was not out today, so I had to do some more uh, work for truck drivers. Uh, Truckguy.org, if anybody's a truck driver out there, uh, if you guys need to get a hold of me, 217-316-0219. Like I said, I'm not a troll. I don't troll people, which means I will give you my information. I'll let you know who I am. I have no reason to attack anybody. I think each, every one of you is great. And if I haven't told you before, and you and I, for some reason, were not in good, or you thought I was mad at you, I forgive you. Please forgive me for everything I've ever done. We're all broken people. We all mess up. We all need to be forgiven. And we need to forgive ourselves for allowing us to just have issues with people. So, anyway, I hope you all have a great day. Hope you all are great. I will talk with everybody later. And have a good one, everybody. And I will get that stuff up and going with Vern, the comedian, and then several other people, because I have to get it up and going for the kids. Uh, I promise these kids we'd be doing some interviews with them on how they like the soapbox derby cars and also the people in Fishing for Freedom. So even if we can't have that stuff this year, uh, I still want to talk to the kids about it so we get them on tape so that you know that how much these kids love these events and these activities. Um, I have not been out getting sponsorships right now because with all the stores and everything closed right now, I, I feel I have to step back just to let this coronavirus take it, you know, take place because I do everything face to face. So, um, if I haven't gotten to you yet, it's because I, ha I actually stopped going out getting sponsorships until the coronavirus passes because our, you know, these kids mean the world to me, but a lot of them have weakened immune systems and everything else. So we're taking it one day at a time. So anyway, in case you're all wondering about that, if not, I will see you all tomorrow and we will be doing more book reading and we will be live with the strawberry pies and baking. So I'll put that up there. Yes, we are going to do it. Just haven't done it yet. i got to get the strawberries out of the fridge. So, anyway, and I will have Gracie tomorrow. So, hope you all have a great evening. And I look forward to talking to everybody soon. Have a good one, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.